Hi there, my name is John Evan. I've produced this work, Primavera, and what I would like to do is to tell you how it came to be and uh, what its relation to the original is. So, Primavera, the original artwork, is in the Fitzi Gallery in Florence. It's obviously very famous. It's one of Botticelli's most well-known works. And when we look at it, we see it's based on Greek mythology. The manner of the, of the work is just predating uh, Renaissance styles. Um, it's got references to the Medici family in the oranges at the top of the picture. The whole look of the, the painting uh, is similar to the Mille uh, tapestries that were common in uh, grand houses at the time although this is uh, painted in paper. When we look at it in a bit more detail, we see here the three graces, the, the faces and then the, as I say, the mannerisms of the, of the figures in the work um, are late Gothic in origin. You might think that for someone whose work is in digital photography, in collage, that that would be quite a challenge to, to get any likeness um, these days from, from my staff, particularly as I, I, I don't generally work with people. The, the work itself um, stood for 100 years or so in the, the Villa Castello, uh, just to the west of Florence, which you can still see together today. Sorry, it's uh, still see today. It's one of the the grand Medici houses. There's lots to see there, and it's a lovely walk for an afternoon. So, what was there in this picture that resonated with me as uh, someone who's, who's not particularly into uh, paintings from that period, or certainly I wasn't at the time? And the two things that came uh, to me were one, one the suggestion of this this utility of the world. And the second, which was the, the sense of, as it was a, a painting um, <clears throat> for a, a marriage, of there being a contract. And being me, I mixed those two things up and said, well, we've got a contract to sustain and keep the world as a fertile place. And that was the starting point for me to look into my own photographs and see what I had, because I thought it was a very interesting topic. As a member of uh, Kew Gardens, I go there quite a lot. And of course, the, the great theme of Kew Gardens is not just as a great place to go, but it's the science behind it as well. And in particular, in the Tempera House, which you see on the left hand side here, there are a, a line of plants there that are endangered. Um, <clears throat> and so you, you do get this, this sense that, that the world is a, a very fragile place, even though it's a very fertile one. The second thing about uh, Q, of course, is that they have a lot of art there. And that relates to nature in, in most of the themes that that come out in, in whatever is being produced, whether it's sculpture or, or glassware or whatever. So <clears throat> I had images from that. I also um, had images for, from round and about London. Here is uh, Dr. Liani DeVito, a San Bedanto and geneticist at the Crick Institute on the left there. Um, there are, within London, you'd be surprised to find the, that there is an association of free-flying macaws, and this is Primrose Hill. Mikey the macaw favoured me with his presence. And on the right-hand side, we've got the zoo and uh, the natural settings that uh, you can find even in, in the centre of London there. So. There was actually a lot to, to, to look at and uh, as well and, and culturally we have Extinction Rebellion uh, in town too. And then when we see art around the world, this is the south of Italy on the left hand side, there is a lot of environmentally based art. One thing you'll notice with the Extinction Rebellion people is, is that their, their dress is quite similar to the, the original in the proper Primavera Chamber. <clears throat> so that gave me a starting point. Um, my first idea 
because I didn't have many people as models, was to to uh, emphasize the blend of the natural world between animal and plant life. And to, by making all of my animals green, I created a, a, a verdant space in, in which there were uh, green animal surprises. So that, that was one starting point for, for the work. Um, and then moving on, uh, I, I noticed that not a lot of the natural gods in, in various religions also had a fertile element to them. So I, I thought it was relevant to bring those in as well. Uh, Adam and Eve was uh, another point of contact and point of contract, if you like, as well, um, where they were given the responsibility of looking after the garden and, and all they had to do was the contract about the apple, which I, I used as an allegory to say, well, if, if you just look after the planet, then no, no harm will come to you. Um, but uh, obviously that didn't turn out that way. And then we've got uh, Pandora on the left-hand side, um, who I always think gets a hard rap, so I never give her a box. I always give her a, a, a handful of them to, to bring into the picture. And then I met some Katak uh, dancers who very kindly uh, gave me permission to use images within the work. And that suddenly meant that from nowhere I now had three graces and again the, the flowing robes of Katak dance uh, are very similar to what was in the original. So <clears throat> this was a, another step forward. And then uh, realizing that I had Adam and Eve being cast out of the, the Garden of Eden in the painting at the Capella Brancacci on the south side of the Arno in Florence. Plus, I had a photograph of a symbolic uh, plant pot from the temple house of the St. Helena olive, which is an extinct species. Now it only uh, exists as DNA, um, which is cool in, in the hope that at some point in the future it'll be possible to bring it back. Um, so now I had more representation of uh, Adam and Eve. And then I became aware of the, the guerrilla reserve in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, the Varunga Reserve near Goma, um, on which they have a, a wall in the center um, of the angels who've given their life in, in the, the guerrillas. And I've represented five on the wall, five green stars of the people who died. But in fact, um, over 200 rangers have been killed doing this highly valuable, but obviously very dangerous work. So it's to them that this picture is dedicated. And with that, um, I had figures in the, pic the picture. What strongly came to me um, from what I then had was the role of, of women within the picture, this one, and also in the original. Um, and it strikes me too that uh, a lot of the work that's being done um, to remind us of our contract with the environment and our needs to sustain it is being done by, by women who, from Thunberg onwards, are are um, the experts or, or just passionate about what they do. So I'm happy to represent that voice within within the work as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it explains to you a little bit more about what's going on in the future. And I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much.